So what I'm going to do uh, in, a, in a little under an hour, hopefully, um, I, I'm going to describe the, uh, the population, the size and structure of king snakes, seasonal activity, movements, microhabitat, behavior, thermal ecology, and, and also predator-prey relations based on a four-year intensive study of the animal that I did at Rainy Slough. Um, uh, that was from 1974 to 1978, back when there were snakes. I went back and resurveyed uh, the site in 2006, 2010, and now 2019, um, 30 and 40 years after the study I'm going to tell you about. Um, I sampled the water hyacinths and the canal banks of, 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 of Rainy Slough on a road crossing that I'll show you in a second. But there were 31 species of herps there, including 11 snake species, six species of salamander, seven frogs, and seven uh, turtles. I collected a total, well, I marked 36 individual king snakes that I captured um, a lot of times. I'm going to describe that. I also caught 351 other individual snakes and 1,266 aquatic salamanders. That doesn't include over 1,000 eggs of a whole bunch of salamanders. Okay, uh, this is a night. Uh, a 2014 aerial photograph. This is Rainy Slough right here. It's a 24 a kilometer, which is about a 15 mile ribbon of marshes and shallow prairies here. It then drained into Fish Eating Creek right here, and Fish Eating Creek uh, was about a 25 miles um, west of Lake Okeechobee where it uh, drained into. So you got the, the, uh, uh, the general plan. For aquatic organism, the most important environmental stressor is, is the intensity and the duration of, of droughts in the springtime. 70% of our rainfall comes from June up to September, correct? Mm -hmm. um, but this is a plot uh, of water levels in the canals of Rainy Slough over that period of time. Um, in, in 1975, uh, we had a severe drought a, a, as I was sampling. All the water dried up in the canals. All the fish died. Uh, but, but, but the herps, though, didn't die. They were in the mud, and they were, and they were hidden... Uh, uh, they were hidden underneath. What happens to all the snakes, almost all the snakes and all the amphibians, all, all the aquatic ones, is as soon as the slough reflooded, they all moved out of the, almost all of them, or, or a lot of them, left the hyacinths and moved out into the, into the marsh. As the water level dropped, moved back in, because the canals are essentially the equivalent of an alligator hole. And but that's how they functioned. Okay, this is an, uh, an, an aerial I took out of a plane in March of 1977. Um, at the time, but this is a wooden a bridge right here. And uh, that's where the water were to go in and out. Uh, uh, this is a March 77. Uh, it was a wet year, and so there was water in the slough and um, all in the canals. And all, all, all of this is water hyacinths. And at this point, uh, the slough is a little over a kilometer in width. Uh, 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 the hyacinths in the canals were 2.7 hectares in, in the total extent, and, and the deepest the water was, even in the wet season, was about here. 
And that meant I could wade the whole thing and I could collect in everywhere. Okay, so how do we sample? Uh, with a going to dredge. Uh, does anybody recognize him? Uh, this is Dick Franz, Offenberg and Franz, 1980, uh, go for tortoises, and this is uh, Dale Jackson. I don't remember what his name is, but he's really handsome, I think. Um, okay, this is a going dredge here. This is what I use. But, uh, you can see uh, two handles here. You put it under, underneath the highest, and one guy on one end, and another guy on the other one. Uh, 59 individuals helped me lift and sort 46 tons of water hyacinths over, over that period of time. Okay, so this is a bag saying I also used on occasion, and the, uh, uh, the going dredge, it was only a little over a half meter, so it was, it was relatively small, but it, again, I could get replicates. Uh, I also used a, a bag saying here, and the advantage of that is that it would sample a little under three square meters of hyacinths, and you're able to do a lot more if you have a bigger crew. Uh, these are two professors. Uh, uh, this guy here, J.D. Wilson, um, he did a lot of work on, on uh, 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 pythons in the Everglades and a bunch of other stuff. Ah, next. Uh, so you lift. No, no. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. They're native uh, to Brazil. Oh, so they're invasive. Then. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely invasive. And, and I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna talk about that in a bit more detail. So you shake the hyacinths out, and you get down to the bottom, and then you look around. And uh, this would be like a typical sample. This is uh, uh, JD's got a, uh, a green water snake, and these are two siren, a greater sirens here. Um, this location right here, this particular bridge, it was used. It was used by at least 16 marked king snakes. Nine others I saw there, but they never came out or I couldn't catch them. 14 of 27 sheds I found were there. Uh, and I marked the snakes by clipping the ventral scales. And I'm going to show you some pictures of that. So I could find a shed, and I said, oh, here's L4. That's a male that I caught on this date, and he was here. And I got him at 200 meters down the way three weeks ago, and, and, and he's here now, so. Okay, uh, that's what that same place uh, looks like uh, uh, today, or, or at least in 2006. Look at all the willows over here that are there now, and, and they weren't in, in the previous uh, picture, if you remember. That's my dear friend, uh, John Douglas. Uh, who was with me, and, and, and of course he's pretending that this is his king snake here, you know. <laughs> um, okay, um, every time I caught a snake, I take it and measure it, snout vent, total length. I would also weigh the snakes, and this turned out to be one of the most important things I did the whole time. Um, I mentioned I marked the ventrals, and in fact, but this is one of my journals. Um, in addition to marking the ventrals, because I was afraid I was going to screw up the marks and I'd misidentify, I would also draw a picture of the color pattern on the ventrals, and then I knew if I turned the guy over, um, I could confirm it was the. It, it was. I didn't screw up. In other words, this is a photo of male L4 here, and there's its burrow right there. That's a, that's a cotton rat burrow. Has an entrance about that wide, perfect for a king snake. How did I find the burrows? Well, well, this one's pretty obvious, right? In other cases, I would see a snake up, 
and, and it was there. I didn't see the burrow, and, and they're not real fast. And so what I'd do is I'd walk up to the snake, and what would it do? It would head for its burrow. So I'd follow the snake till he got down or got in it, pick it out. I know where that burrow was. Uh, if I caught a snake and I didn't know where the burrow was and couldn't find the burrow, after I got done marketing, I'd go back and put him down, him or her down on the ground, stand back. It would look around. It would, it would a ton flick. And then in a, number, in a large number of cases, it would go to its burrow. The other, other way I found them is I'd look for shed skins. If you find a shed skin, there's likely a burrow. Almost certainly there's a burrow there. Um, but this is Mark Mail L2. Um, here's one that I wasn't quick enough. It went down the burrow, so I, uh, uh, so I dug the Sigma Don to the burrow up, and there he was at the bottom. What is amazing to me is that a snake that has the brain of the size of a pea has such intimate absolute knowledge of its entire surroundings. It knows where every burrow is. It knows every place to go. And it returns year after year. It's just amazing. Uh, this particular individual, uh, by the way, after I caught it, it also regurgitated a striped swamp snake and water hyacinths in the same regurgitation, which meant it had to have been in the hyacinth, hunted in the hyacinth, ate it, and then went out to the burrow. Okay, so that's uh, the dark one here is the female. Um, and I took this picture about 11 minutes after I first I saw the snakes. And so when I, I first walked up there, uh, the female only had about, about that much of its head in the, in, in the burrow, and the male had... His head wedged in there trying to stop her from going in and, and trying to copulate. That animal, I saw at this same burrow. Um, I, I watched him go down the canal bank seven meters in a, like this, like this. And at the base, right by the water, is a female. She says, hell no. She goes in the water, so I, I jumped out. I grabbed her out of the water highest and then grabbed him. Okay, so th this is what the food web was at Rainy Slough um, in the 1970s. Um, by 2006... 2010, here's what the food web looked like. Okay? So, so the question is, how did that happen? Okay? Um, I, I, I've explained to you what I think happened to king snakes. But they paved the road uh, tore it up, and then once all of the, all of that all, all of the road was paved, um, uh, tropical nurseries and all of that, uh, uh, commercial nurseries grew up there, and it's just uh, uh, sixteen wheelers all the time. So between the the uh, the exotic fish and the island apple snails. It eliminated all the salamanders. It eliminated the crayfish. It eliminated all the invertebrates in that entire, in that entire community, and it, all, and it all turned to crap. And that's throughout all of south of the, Florida now, everywhere in South Florida. Um, in 2019, I also, after I discovered the, the, uh, uh, the vanished Eden down there, uh, I went north. Into, into a lake in Brooksville, uh, where I previously collected a lot of these 
a lot of the same species, and then also sampled four areas near Gainesville in water hyacinths where there were no exotic fishes and no exotic snails, and the densities of, of snakes and aquatic salamanders were similar to what I found at Rainy Slough in the 70s. And now, <coughs> in the last um, three years, um, three or four of the, uh, of the species of, uh, of uh, fishes I mentioned have been found in, in, in Payne's Prairie and all the way up into Gainesville, as is the island apple snail. So what we're going to see is the extirpation of um, many of the species I talk about. Um, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs>